For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ...and the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Um, remember we were talking a while back about the uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme Inside the Actors Studio? Oh, yeah. Where the host, James Lipton, always asks a the same questions to every guest. And it's just supposed to sort of, you know, get their creative, you know, juices flowing, their mind working. We, we did ask Carl some of them. We, we never completed the questionnaire. Oh, let's go. I'd fire a few then. more at him. And that'll also uh, introduce some um, people to the way his mind works mm. a little bit. Okay. What sound or noise do you love, Carl? Um. There isn't really one that, that I love. Nice noises, yeah. like the ones you get... Like, I like going in the park, right? And you go, oh, that's nice, isn't it? And you get, like, yeah. bird noises and stuff. But with those bird noises comes a bit of stress, right? Cos I was in there the other day, and, uh, like like I say, little bird noises and that, and a little robin was there, and I thought, that's odd, that's out early, right? Cos it's, like, sort of summertime and that. Sure. And then I thought, oh, that's nice, and I was watching it. And then it got, like, a little worm... Right? Mm. And I was like, hey, put it down, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, whoa! What do you mean? Because Why are you interfering? Have... Why were you interfering... In nature. ..with a, with a robin taking a worm? Just because it, it, it was a nice sunny day and that, and I thought... You see, worms normally come out when it's raining, don't they? And you go, well, I bet they're happy to die, in a way, cos it's chucking it down, it's miserable. They come to the top of the soil then, don't they? Yeah. When it's miserable. But it was a sunny day... Unless they don't drown, I assume. No, it's not that, is it? It's just that they, they hear the water or something falling on the ground and they go up to see what's happening. <laughs> what? No, no way. But why do they come up when they think it's raining? You're a worm, OK? It starts raining. Tell me your thought process. Well, you just kind of... You're down there, you can't see anything, it's dark anyway. Yeah. So the, the rain's coming down on the land, the worm goes, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and the worm goes, what's going on? He wiggles up to the top. So what does he do? So it, so it, it goes up and it, it sort of sees it's raining and then it goes back down again, doesn't it? But that's that's what I'm saying about... What do you mean? What do you... What is... Sorry, what is this world where he goes, oh, it's just rain again? Oh, so that's, that's the 400th time I've been caught out this year. It's rain. I'll remember next time. I won't come up. I, 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 what do you think a, a worm is capable of in terms of cognitive thought? What do you mean? Well, a worm can basically... Uh, uh, tell certain chemicals and certain light patterns. That's a, that's all it is, really. Yeah, and... and it's and not thinking, it's not choosing its favourite food. You don't know that, though, is what I'm saying. You don't know what things are thinking. Everything thinks. No, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. The thinking... There's something in this room that's not. All right, what about <laughs> this one, then? What about, um, what about flowers? Do you think they've got a... A mind. A, a feeling? Because here's, here's something that... Again, they, they use phototropism, they go towards the sun, they, they, they close and right, open, well, Can you stop grow. using long words, Rick, like sun? Listen, <laughs> I was... Do you know how I've been to my mum and dad's? Right? I was yeah. talking to my mum about stuff. Oh, all right. And she was saying how um, this flower uh, solved a crime. What happened was there was a murder yeah. right, in an office... So they said it's obvious that someone who works in the office did this murder because that person's only a sort of a typist. He has, you know, they've done nothing wrong. So they said that's narrowed it down, right? So this flower man came in and he said, I can sort this out for you. Hmm. So they said, what do you mean? He said, well, during the murder, the plant was knocked off the cabinet, yeah. right? Right. Um, and he had some special wires that he can put on the, flower, yeah. on the flower and it's sort of shaking and stuff because even though you can't see it, flowers pick up bad vibes and what have you. If you shake a plant, it doesn't like it. <laughs> OK. Right? So what happened was uh, he said, right, what we'll do, we'll put the plant back on the shelf, yep. we'll water it, we'll calm it down, <laughs> then get... Give it a nice cup of tea. Then get every then, member of staff right, to come right. in the room yeah. and just... Go near the flower. Right. So don't tell them. So like a lineup for the flower. Kind yeah. of. Kind of like a lineup. Yeah, but sure. don't tell them what we're doing. Just send them yeah. in and say, stand by that cabinet where yeah. the murder happened and what have you. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long day. They were getting through a lot of stuff. It was a big office block. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were going, this isn't working. You know, the flower's not budging. Mm. Suddenly, they get into like the last part of the day when they were almost giving up. They call in a sketch artist. The plant, the plant gives them a some some caretaker fella. Oh. Uh, um, caretaker. Yeah. Said, go over there. 
Was it, you know, was it an so, old man? That, I mean, because Scooby-Doo didn't like him from the beginning. No. They, they send the caretaker over to the plant. He's going, you know, he's thinking, I've got away with this. Of course. Mm. Plant starts shaking, what have you. They did him. OK, <laughs> wait a minute then. So, was there any other evidence? <laughs> Uh, was that the only evidence they used in the trial? Well, no, it's one of them things, though. Imagine it, if you're that caretaker and you're thinking, I've got away with this, then suddenly a plant grasses you up. You weren't expecting that. So suddenly you're <laughs> off guard. And you go, you go, OK, 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 can't get that chrysanthemum away from me, I did it. <laughs> you're talking absolute bollocks. That was one of the most nonsense pieces of shit I've ever heard but in anyway, my life. Listen, well, it happened, but... It didn't happen. Said it. But what I was saying is about the worm, this robin that I saw that was eating the worm, it had hold of it, and I thought it said sunny day and that give the worm a break sort of thing. So I went, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like that. And it sort of dropped it in shock. But then when it realised I wasn't that near it, it picked it up again and swallowed it. And I just thought, oh... Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, no. I just thought it's a sunny day and everything. Normally birds are nice noises that I like, and yet there it is going about wrecking lives. <laughs> wrecking lives! It was a no, worm! It just, no, but it just swallowed it really quickly and that, and I thought... I just thought, there's the worm. It, it came out, it was happy, it didn't know what was going on. And the, it had an extra chance, the, the robin dropped it, and then it got it again and ate it, and I just, just made me a bit fed up. Well, do you know why, don't you? You couldn't outwit a robin. The worm was going, oh, God, Carl Pilkington. So that's, that's who's been sent to save me, is it, God? You've sent Carl Pilkington, oh, I'm dead. That's it, OK, eat me. But all I'm saying is our bird noises are normally quite relaxing, but not for the worm. Unbelievable. That was one question. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, as me or as a as a worm? I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? Why would, the, I, why would we be asking a worm? I've never heard an actor say that to James Lipton. When he says, um, what noise do you hate? What, as me or a worm? No, wow. but all I'm saying is because of my last question, that's what I was saying. A bird noise is relaxing to me. Right. Well, it's not anymore because I think of all the deaths and stuff that, that go around that. <laughs> so now you hate the sound of birds. <laughs> I'm just saying it's changed my view on it. It's, so, like, it's like anything, isn't it? Every, every noise can mean a disaster. Can it? Why would the sound of laughter, people laughing, why would that suddenly cause... Why would that also signify disaster? If you wake up in the night by the sound of, like, a baby laughing... No, if I, had a ba- if I had a baby, right, yeah. and Suzanne was out, she'd work nights or something, <laughs> yeah. and I'd nodded off, I'd put the baby to sleep, Yeah. and then it's three in the morning and I'm woken up by the sound of a baby laughing, that would terrify me. <laughs> How is this that? I just think the baby's sitting up in a chair like Chucky, going... <laughs> well, no, the... <laughs> I think the baby's reading his diary. <laughs> Thinking, oh, Christ, this is my father. <laughs> I just hope I'm adopted. Oh, God! A baby laughing! What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? This is you as you, not as you as a worm. <sighs> but have I had the training? Oh, for f- Oh! No, well, I've said before, haven't I, about maybe having a go at an operation. <laughs> Why it leaps from where it leaps from no ambition. Where if he could have a job, it would uh, his best job he's ever had is a paper round. And if he could have a job, he'd like go to the cobbler once a week and then walk a dog. To I'd like to have a go at thoracic surgery. No, I'm just saying. I bet it's a, like we do this, and you know some people like listening to it and what have you. And you go fair enough, but I never feel like I'm doing anything of any worth. No, you're absolutely right there. But if you're going into a uh, uh, like an hospital, which are places that are pretty miserable anyway, as a, as an office space. Not only have you got to go in that building and work in it, but you've then got the pressure of changing a lung or whatever I've said before. Right? Changing a lung, yeah. But I'd like to have a go at it so I can say... You've done it. I've done that. So uh, under what circumstances, in, in what world, do you think anyone's going to let you have a go at changing a lung and that? Um, Jim will fix it? No, I'm just saying the Comic way... Comic relief. But the way the world is, and the way that there's more and more people, more and more doctors are needed... I mean, it's already happening now that people are doing jobs that they're not really qualified for because they get they get sort of, uh What's the word? Sort of uppered too early. Uppered. <laughs> <laughs> uppered! Uppered! I love the fact... It's basic language. It's like... It, I, I, it's unbelievable. Uppered. Do you know yeah, what I mean? They, promoted. Yeah, promoted. Yeah. They, get, they get promoted. I prefer Uppard. Uppard's great. So, Why so, was I not Uppard? 
Unbelievable. So do you know what I mean? I think because because more and more people are knocking about, we need more and more doctors. Yeah. You get a job in a doctor's, you're going to be promoted sooner now, I think. Yeah. But what I'd do is I'd, I'd, I'd probably upper you and then... Um, what's the word? You go away them. You, I think it is you go away them. You, you, you leave the door, you. You leave the door. You Fire them. That's it. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'd, I'd up at you and go away the doctor, if anything. Uh, but I've been to... Uh, you know how I don't like going to the doctors and stuff? Yeah. Because right? um, you're always scared that they might investigate below the bridge. Yeah, but I checked on that before. I signed up to it, and then they said, right, before we can take you on as a patient, um, you've got to have a health check. Right, which I thought was odd, because it's almost like saying, if you're ill, you know, we can't be having you coming here. Right? But I said, right, OK, fair enough, What what is this health check? And they said, oh, you know, we'll just check your body out and make sure you're fit and healthy. And I thought, that isn't enough information. You know, I want to know if it's the old finger trick. <laughs> or and, and I said, what what do you mean, though? When you said health check, what do you do? And uh, she said, oh, it's just... I think she knew what I was getting at. And right. she said, oh, it's just the blood pressure... Uh, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's about it. So I went went and had it and stuff. But you had to... Before you sort of said, right, I want this doctor, they give you loads of forms to fill out, right? And um, one of the things they did was, uh, if you die, <laughs> what do you want to give away? Right, like a donor. Mm. And what have you, and I thought... I, I, was, I really thought about it for 40 minutes or so. I didn't just rush into it. I was sat there thinking, you know, if I'm dead, does it matter and stuff? But I was really concerned when it said about the eyes. <laughs> right. Right. Why? What do you mean? What? Because can they have your eyes after you die? It was. It was. I think it was fourth on the list. Why do you care about uh, uh, giving your eyes away just, when you're just, dead? Just because of that thing of you know we don't know for sure yet. I know that you poo poo it, but the afterlife thing. So why in an afterlife do do would you want your eyes more than your liver and your kidneys and your lungs and your heart? Because. Ghosts don't eat, do they? So you don't need all your liver and your kidneys and stuff because they're only there to sort your food out. But your eyes, if you're a ghost, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe in the afterlife I might be treated to a pair of eyes. But the fact of wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff... <laughs> So, oh, that's an amazing image. So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but, but, but why, I don't understand, in your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you, you ghost, this ghostly car, why can he survive without a heart, but he can't survive without eyes? What, why, do you see what I mean? Surely if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no, because, the, the body no, because, because you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think it, when you're a ghost... Say like how they've seen ghosts in... Um... Right, could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo-jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when, you know, when they see ghosts in, like, old castles and stuff, mm. yeah. they've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, right, years ago. But they're carrying it around normally under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you take the eyes out... But, Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's, it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying it under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it, it does. It just happens it... to be carrying it around because it no, you know, ghost... wants to keep it with it. The ghost it? is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in... Oh, well, who makes it's... these rules? The way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever, even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghosts that you see you never wear modern clothes, so they... it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> Now, God. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they stuck with it. So that's why did you see cavemen ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about eighteen thirty, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with your trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your? But ass? why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done. If that's you no, 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 no. A... But you, it, it might have both been suddenly um, killed in a in a terrible disaster. Yeah, a meteorite hit you. That's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round, bent forward, going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You're sort of going, oh... And that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> they, they have to put you to, to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going... Are you go, so, I, so I get the vicar round. It's years later, it's 100 years later, you're, 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 you're round this doctor's surgery and there's people coming, and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's, it's 2073, and they, they go... 
Vicar. Vicar. They go, Vicar, there's a there's a, a strange ghostly apparition. It's, it looks like an old doctor, right, and he's got his fingers up this sort of like little... It's like a chimpanzee, but with a shaved head. No, no, but the doctor wouldn't be... Are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well? They you both, yeah, you both yeah die. they die. You die at the same time with his finger up your ass, And so you're forever... You're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers around your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. <laughs> Rick, I know this is something you always get excited about. It's Carl's diary. Can we have a jingle? I don't believe it! He's got a man and gun! <laughs> Thank you very much. Woke up to the news about an elephant in India that had sore feet, so the locals have made it a big pair of slippers. Tried to look online for a picture, but I couldn't find anything. Surely they've made it two pairs of slippers. Uh, well, I'm only going by the facts in the diary, Rick, and I would have thought that they were absolutely bona fide and fact-checked and completely <laughs> yeah. accurate. I'd be very yeah. surprised if there's any mistakes in here. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they've done this for an elephant before. Uh, I thought elephants have bad memories. No, well, they no, have. But fair enough. I thought elephants have bad memories. If they have, I'm guessing it's going to keep forgetting where it's left them. I mean... Just to get the... If it's a myth, the myth completely wrong. Yeah. Elephants well, never forget. That's the saying. Not they always forget, so you can buy them slippers every year. Carl says, I haven't had a pair of slippers for years. He thinks they're dying out. No, I love slippers. I love a pair of slippers, I love mate. a pair of slippers, mate. Just wear socks. Oh, slidey on a car. No. Slidey on a, on a piece of lino. I know. And what about if you, you know, maybe opening a, a, a brand new box of thumbtacks? <laughs> you drop them all over the floor, you're trying to pick them up. Rick, I've got to pop across the road to get some milk. But well, it's, it's right opposite. I'm sure you're not going to go in my socks, though. I? I don't want to put on the shoes, it's mad. No, no, no. Pop some slippers on. Oh, perfect, yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't go out in your slippers. Why not? Just across the street, mate, to get some milk. Because they're inside shoes. You don't go rowing about on tarmac in slippers. That's basic. But you don't have any slippers, so no, you're just tiptoeing across the street. You know, I put your... my shoes on. But you can, you can, you can, you can pop out and get the uh, the, the paper and you know the, the bottle of milk, can't you, in the slippers without without any harm done? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> That'll make it into the diary. Tried to have a shower, but there was no water. <laughs> I love it when he calls me and things go yeah. wrong with the flat. But I like the fact that he tried to have a, he tried to have a shower, but there's no water. How long did it take you before you realised <laughs> yeah, he was there for 20 minutes? Yeah, after 20 minutes, it's Suzanne, should I be dry? Oh, yeah, I'm freezing cold. Yeah, no, no, you should, you should be sort of wet and warm. <laughs> right, there's no water then. <laughs> Brilliant. I called the service charge people, but no one was about. Looked outside, but couldn't see any work going on. Great, in it. In India, they can sort out elephants with shoes. In London, we have no water. <laughs> <laughs> Hung about for a bit, but still no sign of any water. Brush my teeth just using the paste and use the little bit that was in the kettle to have a wash. I was pretty chuffed that I thought of using that. Suzanne was a bit annoyed because she wanted a cup of tea. She said, go across the road and buy a big bottle of water. Not in your socks. Pop some slippers on. Go across the road and buy a big bottle of water, she said. I never thought of that. <laughs> oh. You had a wash using the water that's in the in bottom the of the kettle. Yeah, well, that's clean, isn't it? But how much? is any little drop in there. No, it's a big kettle. So what, did you just wash your face? Yeah. So you didn't, you didn't wash your body or anything? Your genitals well, you were you couldn't, could you? You've got to look at what, what you can do with the water available. People in Africa and that short of water aren't wasting it, so no, the feet are a bit dirty. They drink it. What do you mean? Add a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the uh, double glazing people. Yeah. You say that pe Scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that... They found out that it's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were 20 years ago. So it's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom, because of, like, people... Keep, people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right? Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. It's rubbish. So, so they've always pushed it down. It's, it's also measured pushed. against sea level. It's not measured about when you get... Otherwise, they'd just dig a big hole, wouldn't they, and go, right, it's down to here. If the, the, the no, peak does, is at, measured at against the, the day, sea though, level... Does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's all, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun, he's not going to go, oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Going to be shattered. <laughs> so don't, don't worry about it. 
It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else, though, that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there, and someone got near the top, and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag, I had to go back. No, the, their hand hit the bit of rock, and it went like, ding. Like, what's that? Ding, ding. Ding. Put another hand up, ding, ding. Piano under there. They don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. Someone's been tipping. Well, oh, right. <laughs> what about Everest? OK. A... The council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're I'm not, not going to sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just... just I'll tell you what. Yeah. Just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days. <laughs> and it may, you may die. But just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused you've confused a few things there because I think the the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there, yeah. and everyone said, "I don't understand how's the piano doing up here." And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, had dragged oh, had dragged right. a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance. Yeah. But thought I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again, and just left it up there. Yeah. It wasn't you know bloody tipping or aliens or anything. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's, that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And then what, they'll be, like, rampaging around the cities, will they, you, like... I'll tell you just... what, though, right? No, I'm getting worried now, because the stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, it... it, I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean, though? Like a proper paranoid sort of... It, one of those people that assume are going to live in a loft covered in tinfoil. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the... Yeah, and yeah. Suzanne's having to put on a, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have to polish each bean. That's, what, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, of think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said, yeah. that they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a the lunchbox with a chocolate bar. Within an hour, it was gone. Right, and they say now these germs love chocolate. And Did stuff. this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? Anyway, it's unbelievable. Uh, he said, Ted, he went what? <laughs> right, I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ. I came, it's gone. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant. That. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one. See if it happens again. So in the future, you're running around, and germs are eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs>